Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> wow. How's it going? Good. Good? Good. Yeah, you have the first session to wake up a little bit and uh, feeling better now. The party was not too hard on you yesterday. Uh, yeah, you teach me some bad words. <laughs> I don't need it. So, uh, welcome. Thanks for uh, being here. It's not really easy when you have like more than one session you need to choose, and uh, the fact that you had one yesterday and one today means that there is two other sessions you will never, never see. Yes. Yeah. So I totally agree with you for uh, being here. I totally understand. You're in one of the best sessions. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Frederick Harper. You can call me Fred. I'm a technical evangelist at Mozilla, so uh, what does that mean? I probably already saw a technical evangelist uh, at Mozilla, but basically my job is to uh, give love to developers. This is uh, what I've been paying for, so doing conferences, user group, talking about uh, the awesomeness that is Firefox OS and helping developers to be successful in the platform. And Janet? Hi, I'm Janet Swisher. I'm a community manager for Mozilla, focused on developer relations. We have uh, you know, a long time and very active community for Mozilla Developer Network. We're starting to do more community involvement with evangelism. And so my job is to make it easier for volunteers to get involved and hopefully make people want to stay involved. Um, so that's me. Awesome. And we have Gustav. Okay to yourself, like if nobody knows you, but still, for posterity, we are recording. Oh, yeah. uh, so, I work with community evangelism in Community India, and I'm currently here to coordinate with Fred and Janet to help them with the session next week. Yes. And there's Priyanka as well, but she's probably going to fetch more people, so she might be getting the time. Awesome. So, hopefully we'll have time to hear from Costa and Priyanka about their experience doing some developer events in India. In, in. And, you know, they, they talked about that in the uh, community building session yesterday, but maybe we will get to have a little bit more detail. So, that's cool. Good. And feel free, if you're on Twitter, to use uh, our Twitter handle to tweet about the session. We want to see many tweets using the Moscam hashtag. And the slide's going to be online after, so you don't have to take notes from things in the slides. Uh, we're going to have the recording. I'm also recording on my computer. That's going to be on, uh, at least on outofcomfortzone.net, my blog. Uh, so feel free to uh, go check this after, probably beginning of the week. So first thing first, uh, before we start, I want everybody to go to that link. This is case sensitive. <laughs> so you need to uh, go to that link. There's an either tab. Uh, I want you to put your name and email because if you are here today, it's probably because you want to know more about how to reach developers, how to talk to developers about Firefox OS, what you can do to help Mozilla Mission to uh, share the love about Firefox OS. So uh, basically what we're going to do is basically to keep in touch with you uh, after the session because we want to be sure that uh, we're going to be there to help you and that you have a way to contact us after. So please put your name and email. We won't spam you. Uh, I uh, promise you that we won't spam you. Has everybody got a link? Yeah, <laughs> Is it uh, good? Use a pizza to put your uh, name in the Sunday session and not destroy the Saturday session, please. Yeah, please. It <laughs> would be great. So, yeah. Good, 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 good. Uh, so, today we're going to talk about uh, community evangelism. So, how many uh, of you are developers? So, I would say everybody except those two. Spies for me, engagement. So this is, this is a good thing because uh, what we're going to talk today is really how you can help uh, to reach developers about Firefox OS. So it's good because you need some technical skills to be able to uh, talk to, with those people. So because you want to become a community evangelist, we're going to talk a little bit about what does that mean. So first, uh, and it's, it's basically what my role is as an evangelist. I'm a technical evangelist, so I work with community, I work with developers. And I would say that my role and your role now is split in two parts. Basically, the first one, 
I would say about 25% of the role is about inspiring developers. We need to excite them about new technology. We need to edu educate them about technology. And there is another part that is we need to enable those people, give them the tools that they need to make this happen, to build Firefox OS application, to be able to be a contributor, to be able to help us do what we have to do. So it's basically, both are really important. But I would say that the role is like 25% of inspiring developers and 75% of enabling developers to be able to do what they have to do. So what we're going to do as community evangelists, the people we want to reach, do you have an idea which kind of audience we want to talk about, we want to talk with? Which kind of audience? When are you going to talk about Firefox OS? Which kind of people you're going to talk to? This is a real question. <laughs> Any idea? Every people? Yeah. Every technical people? Yeah. Students? Anybody. Sorry? Anybody? Anybody? One of the developers. The developers? So I would say all the answers were good. But I would say that because we're developers, because we're going to talk about Firefox OS more on the technical side, I would say every developer is her target audience. But I would add to this. I would say every developer who develop for the web on the web. I would add again to this. I would say, OK, every developer who develop on the web using HTML. Because it's great to talk to Ruby people, to Python people, to Java developers. They're all developers, though. They're all able to create Firefox OS application. But when it comes to Firefox OS, we need to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's a lot easier to talk to people that already know those technology. And the last part that I would have to the target audience is every developer who develop on the web using HTML who already have an HTML and or a phone gap application or a game. So those are the people that we target right now. Does that mean that we need to target that we can target everybody or every, every developers? No. <coughs> the only answer is right now is because we try to target right now the low aiming fruit first. What do we call the people that have the more chances to port their HTML application, their phone gap application to Firefox OS. It's a lot easier when you already have an application. It's a lot easier when you already know the technology. As I said, everybody is more than welcome to publish Firefox OS application. But right now, whether we like it or not, we need to play that game of, hey, how many applications do you have in the marketplace? This is a question we got quite often. So we don't want to go for the quantity. We want to go for the quality. But it's easier for us to get more great quality application in the marketplace if we target the people that already have application right now. So part of your job, starting right now, starting today, is to inspire developers about the platform, about Firefox OS. You already do this every day about Mozilla, about the mission. You probably already do this about Firefox OS. But we're going to view together how we can do this. So how many of you like maths? Like, okay, yesterday people were more like, yeah, I was like, hey, I'm not a big fan of maths, but I created an equation. And, and people were like, no, you're dumb. Like, we like maths. And today I'm like, hey, okay, let's be positive. Let's talk about math, maths. And nobody liked maths. It's not really Yeah, so it's always like <laughs> So there's a, a small equation uh, when it comes to inspiring developers. Uh, and this is my personal view about like, how can you inspire developers? So it's sharing about your passion about technology. Do you like technology? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. yes. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Janet. Janet is always always the one who likes technology so much in the room. So now you like technology. So part of your job, part of my job, part of Janet's job is to share her passion about technology. If you have no passion about what you're going to talk about, that's not going to work. Sharing your passion about technology plus exciting developers about cool stuff. Is Firefox OS cool, a cool technology? Yes. 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 Oh my god, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask the question again, go away from Janet. <laughs> Is Firefox OS a cool technology? Yes. yes. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. 
So this is a cool technology. It has developers, has community evangelists. We are able to share that passion about that cool technology that is Firefox OS. But it's not enough. We need to show those developers, we need to show the people we talk to about the benefits of using that technology. How many times will, uh, did you go to a conference, you attend a session, the session was super interesting, a lot of really cool bleeding edge technology, it was really, really nice, but it was not really something you were able to use at work or use at school, it was not really ready, it was kind of bitter or alpha or the speaker gonna show you how you can really use that technology. So it's nice to share your passion, it's nice to excite people about the technology, but you need to show them that there is a benefit. Why should, as a developer, build application, port my application for Firefox OS? So you need to show them why, you need to show them how, you need to give them the tools to make this happen. So all together, that gives me my equation about inspiring developers. Does that make sense? Yes, kind of, uh-huh, you're so dynamic. <laughs> That's okay, I can be dynamic for 20 person. So, how many of you would like to give talks? Or maybe I already give talks, presentation and conferences and user group, yes, usually it's probably everybody in the room. And there are some people that don't raise their hand, but it's like, oh, I really want to do this, but uh, I'm kind of afraid to be in front of people. And I totally get it, I totally understand. So what we're gonna talk now, it's really about uh, giving presentation about Firefox OS. So how many of you know Firefox OS, I would say on the technical side, like how to build application? It's good. So you don't have to know how to do this right now, but I would highly suggest you uh, to learn more about how to build application for Firefox OS. There's a lot of great documentation, a lot of great videos online. Uh, the thing is right now we're going to do the eye level stuff about really how to talk about Firefox OS and you're going to be able to learn on your uh, own time how to uh, present the technical side of this. So giving talks is probably uh, one of the most powerful ways to inspire developers. You have that relation one to many people, you hire the person in front of you, people take their time to listen to you. So it's probably one of the most powerful ways. Uh, you can reach more people at once. Uh, there is no issue, no problem when you go to a networking event, when you go to a conference, you talk to people and you have discussion with the developers. You talk about, oh, Firefox OS is so cool. You show your device, you give them some great example. This is a good way to inspire people. But when you do this, you talk to one person. When you give a talk, you talk to 10, 20, 100, 200, 1,000 people. You talk to a lot of people depending on the type of crowd that you have when you do this. It can be done at a different level, and we'll come back on this, like how you can start to do uh, public speaking. And it's, it's really nice for Mozilla, it's nice for Firefox OS, it's nice for the mission we have, but it's really, really nice for YouTube. There is a lot of benefits by doing so. You become the expert, you get some visibility, you grow your network, you may get a new job, you may get new contact that will lead you to have new customers if you have your own company. So there is a lot of benefits of giving some talks in conferences and user groups in many places. So when you talk about Firefox OS, and I would say when you talk about any topics, there is something that I call the presentation art. There's some stuff like this that I can say without laughing, kind of inside joke. So um, I should have changed that. Uh, can you see this on the back, like the small color? So uh, for every talk you will do, there's always that presentation part. You need to tell a story. And the story will begin with an introduction about your topic. You're going to talk about yourself. Hey, my name is Fred. I'm doing blah, blah, blah. Please, this is a pet peeve of mine, don't take 10 minutes to talk about yourself. If I'm in the room, I'm not there to learn about you. I'm there to learn about your topic. So it's good to say, hey, my name is Fred. My Twitter is fr3. You can see my blog. I'm a technical evangelist. I usually explain why. What is a technical evangelist? Because when I say this, I see a lot of interrogation point in the room. 30 seconds. I'm done. Enough, enough of Fred. I want to learn about the content. After this, I'm going to introduce my presentation. What is my presentation? What I'm going to talk about? Why I'm going to talk about? Uh, this topic. And I'm going to show you more specific things around Firefox OS. I can have the big part of my content with a second part, and I'm going to finish this with a conclusion. So that kind of makes sense. But you, you see that graphic? 
You need to start with something like really, really exciting. You start the presentation, you go in the edge of your topic, and finally you slow down and you finish with a conclusion of resources. So when it comes to Firefox OS, I'm going to do an introduction about why I'm talking about this. I'm going to talk about Firefox OS. I'm going to talk about web APIs, web activities. I'm going to finish with resources and conclusions. So let me show you one of the slides that I use when I do talk about Firefox OS. So I'm starting by introducing my story, why I'm here, what I'm going to talk about. Of course, when you go to conferences, people, people have title, they have abstract, but still you need to remember them why they're in the room, because also so many people just don't read the abstract that you created. Title slide, blah, blah, blah. My story is that, hey, how many times do you have a discussion with customers, friends, or even yourself you know, when you want to start a new project? Uh, you want to create a mobile application. And most of the time it's like, oh, should we create native application or web application? Is it a discussion that you have sometimes? And most of the time it's like, okay, uh, let's do a native application because I'm going to have access to the hardware. It's going to be faster. HTML5 is not there yet. It's not really fast. It's, it's not really good. And this is usually the feedback we got. I say, hey, yeah, I really like HTML5, but sometimes it's true. like. We miss some element, we miss some feature in HTML5 that has developer head and have access to those things. So I cannot give a great experience to my user. Talking about the fact that there is many devices online, and I introduce my story. So there is a problem. There's always that question about native versus web. There's a problem of perception about HTML5. We don't have all the tools. And by I say, no, I'm going to show you that HTML5 is amazing. It's awesome. Let me tell you about Firefox OS. Let me tell you about the APIs that we had to HTML5 to give the power in the hands of the developers. So this is my introduction. I introduce Firefox OS because even if it's, there, uh, even if it's uh, available since one year-ish, there's a lot of developers that just don't know Firefox OS. There's a lot of people that think that, hey, no, this is just a new project. Uh, you need to set the credibility about the project. So, hey, we got the idea two years ago, three years ago. We started to work on it. One year ago, we launched our first devices. Oh, guess what? It's made with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. This is the technology you know as web developer. You don't have to learn a new language. This is open source. Wow. Oh. You can go on GitHub, you have access to the source, you can know what is behind Firefox OS, you can participate, you can fix bugs, you can have features. Guess what? It's not new. It's not that new. We did a lot of work in one year. We launched 15 countries, we have more than five devices, we're going to have more devices that will go there. And this is a phone really inexpensive. You can buy one online for about $100. Uh, it's not because of HTML that we don't have any marketplace. We have a marketplace, you can install application, we have all the application that the users need. But we want you to put your application there. We don't force you, this is an open ecosystem, but you have the choice to do it. I'm talking a little bit about the adaptive search, everything.me, and say, hey, what is a Firefox OS application? Oh, okay, you need to have the manifest file, this is basically a JSON file that gives a description about the uh, application. You can do what I call the vanilla HTML, so no framework, no web API, just pure HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Or you can use any framework you want. If it's working in the browser, most of the time, that should work on Firefox OS. So I'm talking about this, doing a quick demo about how you can port a Firefox OS application to, uh, uh, actually an HTML application to Firefox OS. And I'm going to do that demo after, if I have some time, to show you how to demo uh, something like this. After this, I'm talking about web APIs. Hey, what is web APIs? This is the cool stuff that we have to Firefox OS. You don't have to learn a new language, but th those are new APIs that you can use by uh, creating your application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Talking about web APIs, different security level, doing some demos about, hey, the MBN licensor, I'm using my real device. I show people that, hey, with JavaScript, I can access part of the hardware that I don't have access right now when it comes to HTML. I can do this with Firefox OS. Doing another demo with battery status. And this is usually where people are like, oh my god, wow, so cool. Uh, Firefox OS is amazing. This is the future of the web, blah, blah. And it's where people get excited. Because I'm showing them that, hey, with like two lines of code, three lines of code, ten lines of code, you can do things 
that you usually do with native development like Objective C, like C Sharp, like uh, Java. Now you can do this with HTML. So this this is the uh, a pretty cool part. This is the technical part. I don't have to code everything. So I do a mix between having some code example in the slides, having some code demo where I'm going to type some code, but not too much because people are not there to see you code. And when you code uh, uh, in front of people, everything can happen. You can do some typo, there's some issue, you're losing time, people are losing their time, you don't want to do this. So some small code demo. Sometimes I'm using projects that are already done, so I'm just showing the code. Sometimes I'm going to copy paste some code. As far as I like to code in front of people, personally, I don't think this is the best thing because of all the reasons that I just talked. After this, I'm still on my P. I'm still talking about cool stuff, but slowing down to my curve of my presentation. I'm talking about web activities. Hey, this is cool. There's a lot of things you can do uh, that give you access to API that you don't have access in certify API. But you can do this with what we call the web activities, like the pick activities. You can some, get a picture, so this is the equivalent of using the camera. And guess what? It's super cool because if you build your application using web activities, you can have you can run your application on Android. If you have Firefox installed, you can run your application on an Android device. You can do this also on the browser. So by doing this, you show the developers that hey, there is some benefits to do this. I'm not just targeting Firefox OS uh, users. I'm targeting Android users. There's a lot of users. So this is a good way to showcase that you can have an impact by building an application for Firefox OS. And this is the end of my presentation. Done a great job. Talk about Firefox OS. I excited people. Now this is the time where I'm talking about resources. Oh, hey, this is cool. There's some values to do this. I'm talking again about, hey, you can monetize your application. Uh, you can put some has. There's some ways you don't have to. Put your application open source if you don't want to. It's not because it's Mozilla that we force you to do it. We highly suggest you to do it. But you can uh, close your source. You can sell your application. Again, it's not because it's Mozilla that you have to give your application. Uh, I'm talking about the phone gap and portable support because it's really great for people that want to target multiple platform. Talking about a program we have, talking about resources. And uh, I'm basically done. I talk about the resources. But I need to finish my story. So remember what I said at the beginning, I said, hey, HTML5, not quite there yet, we're missing some stuff, has, develop has developers. I shown you that it was working well, that we have the API. It's important to tell those developers also that those APIs are working on Firefox OS right now. But our goal is not to keep those API only for Firefox OS. We work with the W3C to be sure that those APIs will be part of the standards at some point. And it's already working. Uh, if I'm, I'm thinking about battery status, if you use, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's the uh, Google Chrome Canary. They're, uh, so the kind of nightly equivalent of Chrome. Uh, you can uh, use the battery status API and you're going to have access to the battery status. So there are already other vendors implementing those APIs. If the APIs change, if the standards change, sorry, we're going to change Firefox OS to reflect this. So this is really important to tell developers about this because we don't want those people to develop Firefox OS application. We want those people to develop open web application. We want those people to develop web application that's going to work on Firefox OS. Finishing my story about, hey, remember, as I said, I told you about HTML5, I was not quite there. Guess what? Now you know how to build Firefox OS application. Now you know how to port your application. Now you know the exciting IP, API we have. How would like you to think, next time you're going to build an application, think about Firefox OS. Think about what I call the future of the web, but the future of the web now. So I finish my story, give my contact information, and I'm done. This is the kind of presentation that I'm giving. It's about 45 minutes. It's enough. It's, it's, it's never enough to talk about technology like this. I would be able to talk for three days. I would be able to talk forever. It's probably my problem, problem in my life. But uh, I hope we'll be able to talk about Firefox OS for way longer than 45 minutes. But this is quite of the standard when it comes to uh, presentation and conferences. So this is really high-level stuff. You do some technical things, but you're kind of touching the point of the iceberg about Firefox OS. Your goal is to inspire people, to use, inspire people, so they want to know more about Firefox OS. So they want to port their application, so they want to use that technology. So let me show you a quick demo. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> is, is the, uh, this is the cool time, part. time cup. <laughs> oh, so the rest was not the cool part. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> so uh, what is great is that you don't need a real device to do those demo. Uh, you can use a simulator. It's working well for mostly everything you have to do. Sometimes it's cool if you have a, a real Firefox OS device, it's cool to use the device because you show people that, hey, it's working on a real hardware. So what you need to do, uh, you don't need an Elmo. You know that, that devices that we use in different uh, presentation during Moscam. You don't need that uh, devices. What you need is a USB cable and an application called Druid Ad Screen. So it's free. It's a Java application. Sorry about that. But uh, this is the only application working well to do this. So actually, uh, what you're gonna see is basically my device that I have it, um, that I have here, my Kion. What is important to know and tell people is that uh, that drive for uh, ad screen application, it's pretty good, except the refresh rate. So when I'm doing something on my phone, it's uh, not refreshing so quickly on the screen. So it's important to tell people in the room that, hey, it's not Firefox OS that is that slow. It's the Droid ad screen application. But still, it's good enough, and actually, uh, it's the only solution that we know uh, to be able to show what's on a real device. So I have my device right now. What I'm going to do, this is a, a, one of the first demo that I do, how to port an actual uh, application, for, uh, web application to uh, Firefox OS. So let me just grab to do MBC architecture example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take an actual web application and I'm going to show people, hey, this is how you can build a Firefox OS application with a normal, a normal uh, web application. So it's really easy. It's a good example to show people, hey, I'm, I'm not like bullshitting you. It's really easy to do so. So how many of you know to do MVC? So uh, this is a project that uh, is on GitHub. Many people work on it. This is basically just a, a kind of demo project on GitHub. This is a simple to-do list. We cannot have more simple than that to-do list. But the idea is to, because when it comes to web technology, we have so many frameworks, so many JavaScript frameworks, so many ways to do the architectures. So what they thought about is, it's not always easy to find which uh, framework I can use. So they use that same project and they replicate that project with every, or at least all the, the one that they used, many frameworks, many architectures uh, to have you, to, uh, sorry. So you can have a project, it's the same project using different uh, frameworks. So it's easier to find or to learn more about those kind of projects. So now I'm using the one using uh, Ember.js. So this is a sample to the list. I'll scam India, I'm going to have the task, and uh, I don't know, do speaking session. Okay, mouse cam in India is nearly done. I don't want to speak anymore. So you know it's working in the browser. This is an application, a web application. So what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do now, uh, I have another small project called Firefox OS Starter. This is just a, a kind of boilerplate that I'm using to start new project around Firefox OS. So this is an empty project. Uh, some icons so I can publish to the marketplace easily. Uh, CSS file is empty. JavaScript file is empty. Uh, what's it's important in that uh, project is the uh, manifest file. So I already created the manifest file so uh, I don't have to type this uh, all the time. So it's easier for me because I told you I can type this while you're watching me doing that demo. But I'm going to lose, what, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes. I may, I may do some typo. So it's easier for me to use that project. So I highly suggest you to do something like this. So the idea would be to add the manifest file to the project. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, go on the other way. And I'm going to add all my web application to my Firefox OS starter uh, project. And now what I did, basically, it's, it's I just had the manifest file plus some icons to my actual web application. And now I have a Firefox OS application. But you should not hand the demo there because it's like, hey, you need to believe me, I won't show you the result. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to publish, I'm going to push my application on my device. And I'm going to show people that, yes, now I, have a, I went from a web application and by adding the manifest file and some icons, I have a Firefox OS application. So you already have the tools you need in the App Manager. This is where I'm managing my application that I want to test, that I want to debug, that I want to push on the simulator on, on a real device. Now, because my phone is connected, I can connect to my phone 
and I have a small pop-up that says, hey, would you like to connect? I'm going to have my application to the, uh, to the uh, App Manager. Usually what I would do, I would talk a little more about what is the App Manager and how it's working uh, in my usual demo because I want to introduce people to the App Manager. But I won't do this right now, but this is what you should do because people don't know App Manager because you're just teaching them about Firefox OS. So I'm adding my application. I could have given a better name, better description, but you get the point. This is my Firefox starter project. I'm going to push my application to my real device. And this is what is great with that uh, Droid ad screen is that you can see what's happening on my phone. I was going again on the street. So I'm going to open my application and you're going to see I'm going to have my to do list application. So I can continue to add some tasks and uh, that's going to work. Like the same thing, that's going to work like uh, it was in the browser. Do you like my Firefox OS application? No? Yes. Okay, if someone was going to say yes, I would say you are a liar. <laughs> this is probably not the best Firefox OS application you will ever see in your life. And there is like a couple of reasons for that. I'm doing that presentation even if the result is not perfect. Because you need to be honest with people. It's easy to port a web application or a web game to Firefox OS. But you have some work to do at some point. Like that to do MVC example. One thing, it's not responsive. I would have to think about responsive web design in that case. I would have to modify my application so it adapts to that screen. Now I don't have a great experience. I need to scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, scroll right, zoom in, zoom out. Really, really not a good experience. Also. There is absolutely no integration with the platform. I'm not using specific API. That could make sense for some application. A lot of games don't use APIs. Maybe they use the accelerator, accelerator, but most of the time they don't use an API. So what I would do in that case, it's either uh, first probably uh, have, uh, think about responsive web design, so using media queries to make sure that uh, it's working well and that give a better experience. So that would be my first step. And maybe I would think to do an integration, maybe push notification for new to do uh, for new tasks in my to do list. So my presentation is not perfect, but it's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show people that hey, it's easy to port, but still you need to think about the device screen. You need to think about a couple of things to make it work. So no need for fancy tools, USB cable, through that screen. It's a free application. You're good to go your demos on a real device. As I said, if you're not showing uh, something that needs uh, some part of the hardware, like the accelerometer, you can also do those presentations in the simulator that will be even more fluid. The uh, refresh, rate, refresh rate will be better. And I don't uh, suggest you to do demo about like games with a device connected at uh, that screen because the refresh rate is not good. But still, you have everything you need to do your presentation about Firefox OS. So now, you all said that you wanted to start speaking, or mostly everyone. You know, I show you quickly how to talk about Firefox OS. No worries, if you need slides, there is a lot of things we can do to help you. But where can you start to, to speak? When can you find some speaking gig? Work is a good place. You can start at work. How many of you know about those, uh, what, you, what we call lunch and learn? So it may not be something that, yeah, I, th I think it's not something happening in India. But you can be, uh, someone that bring this in India. So basically it's uh, you go out to work and during lunchtime where people bring their lunch and you present about the topic. That could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour during all lunchtime. People are eating during your talking but it's a good way to start uh, to talk about a, a topic. That could be about a, a project you did at work, that could be about Mozilla, that could be about Firefox OS, that could be about a new feature you had to the product you're working, you're building at work. That could be about anything. It's a good way to start. It's not a good group usually, and it's people you know. So uh, that could be a good way to start. So you can bring this up uh, at home. I would be more than happy that one of you ping me in uh, two weeks, three weeks, one month, and say, hey, Fred, I just started lunch and learn at work. So please do this. That could be awesome. You can start to do this at school. There's a lot of opportunity at school. Sometimes you, are some, uh, you have some uh, clubs, uh, you have some conferences, some events. Don't be afraid to ask. There is an opportunity there for you to start speaking. Of course, what everybody wants to do is speak at conferences. 
I don't know how many conferences you have here, but I know there is one in September, GS2. Uh, this is an opportunity. I don't know if it's open to everyone. So depending on, uh, on the conferences, of the conferences type and the organizers. Some of the conferences, they open up to new speakers. Uh, some of the conferences, they have tracked only for new speakers, or they have like one time where they gave lightning talks. So this is pretty good because you only have to talk for like three to five or 10 or 15 minutes. So it's easier to start with those talks. You can do this in user groups. There's a lot of user groups that give chance to new speakers or that do things that we call speaker idol, but we'll come back on this. And there is other clubs just about speaking where you can talk, uh, when you can do your first presentation. Things like Toastmaster, uh, any networking even, sometimes you have a chance to start speaking. So Muslo can help you. We can give you some training about public speaking. Today it was really the high level, how you can talk about Firefox OS. But some of you may know Christian Elman, I think he came here a couple of months ago to do uh, exactly this, training you about public speaking. So if you need help, let us know, send me an email. We're gonna talk about a mailing list. You can send an email, we can help you with uh, the materials, we can help you with the slides. Uh, I can review your slides, you can send me a recording of your presentation, you can do the presentation to me by Skype or whatever technology you wanna use, and I can give you some feedback that will be more than that, more than happy to do this. We can help you to find some speaking gig in your city. So if you're not sure about the conferences and user group in India where you are, we may have information about this. There's many people asking Mozilla to speak at conferences so we can help you. In some cases, so don't take this as the ultimate truth, but in some cases we may pay for a traveling expense if you want to speak outside of the country. It's depending on the topic, depending on your expertise, depending on your experience, depending on the event, if that makes sense for us or not to be there. But keep this in mind, it's still good to know that it's there. And uh, of course we can have you to or pool of speakers uh, in different ways. So uh, one of the first things is the speaker group. I will let Janet tell you about it because she's the mastermind behind that amazing group. So uh, we, this has just started. Um, in the past, uh, like after Christian came and did some speaker training, we started some mailing list and, and uh, Facebook group, but it's been kind of hard to keep track of people, so we don't really know like who actually went to the training and all of that. So this is a new solution so that we know who's interested in speaking, what they speak about, where they are, and so on. So uh, there's a new group on mozillians.org that uh, is a curated group, so you have to request to join. Um, but this is the way to say, hey, I'm interested in speaking on uh, Mozilla-related topics. And so there, there are two criteria that you have to meet in order to be added to the group. Um, change your profile to say I, something like, I like to speak about Firefox OS apps, uh, Hacking Gaia, you know, whatever you, you'd like to talk about. And add a link to your profile. There's, there's a section of the profile of external accounts. And so add a link to something that shows us your activity. Lanyard is a site that is used a lot for conferences. I'm going to this, I'm speaking at that, I'm interested in that one, and so on. So that's, that's a good one, actually, if you don't really have a history of speaking, but you can still create an account and we can see what, you know, what's going on. And, and um, or SlideShare, if you use that, the irony is that if you use HTML5 for your slides, it's hard to put them on SlideShare. So it could be those things, or it could be any other kind of feed. Some people have their presentations on GitHub, you know, anything like that where we can see what you're up to. And she is strict about this because I, I did a request and she, she refused me because I did not put my linear uh, link or SlideShare link. So you need to do this. Okay. I didn't want anybody to say, oh, but Fred doesn't have a <laughs> So, so if you have, if you met these two criteria, then I will add you to the group. Um, also, this is a little. This is not a friendly URL, but uh, you may know about the Yammer that Mozilla has for community. If you are a vouched Mozillian, you can join this private social network, and within that, within that Yammer, 
we have a group for speakers. So that's this is where so this is the Mozillians is how kind of the staff who deal with events will know about you. The, the Yammer group is um, for everybody who wants to do this to talk to each other. You know, there's no discussion on Mozillians.org, so we use Yammer instead. I know we have too many channels, too many ways to communicate. But at least, you know, we're using one. That, this is one that we do already use. So, um, so look for the speakers group on Yammer. So basically, these are you know, two different systems. You have to join two groups, but they have different purposes. Just do, do both. OK? So that's, uh, that's the speaker group. Uh, also, um, there is a request form for, ev for events and conferences that want a speaker from Mozilla or want sponsorship from Mozilla. So you should know about this. And if you are talking to a, a conference organizer or something that wants to get something from Mozilla, tell them about it. We'll have a, uh, we have a, we're going to give you a bunch of URLs at the end of the, the presentation. But basically, use this request form. Uh, to make that, those requests, and we have a process that we track it through and, and follow up and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and now Fred will talk about blogging. Yeah, so how many of you have a blog right now? Well, I like India, like, it was the same thing <laughs> yesterday. Everybody got a blog, mostly everybody. So if you don't have a blog, I highly suggest you to create one. Uh, this is a really good way to share your passion. This is a really good way to inspire people. This is a good way to create a portfolio of what you did, what you think, uh, what you want to do. So it's really a good way that can help you in different ways that will help you as a community evangelist, but that will help you again on a personal side, like uh, when you do some speaking uh, engagement. So, of course, you can write your own blog, you can have your own blog, but we also have something called the Axe blog. So, if you go on axe.mozilla.org, you have a technical blog about Firefox, Firefox OS, Firefox for Android, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, everything that is, that is web related or is related to Mozilla is and is technical are on that blog. So this is a blog that is run by the uh, technical evangelist team. Uh, Robert Nyman is the uh, master uh, behind that blog. Robert would like me to call him master, so <laughs> let's, let's not tell him that I said that. So uh, if you have any idea about a technical post that you would like to share with other people, please tell me, let me know. I'm going to help you to write that blog uh, post, and we can publish this to the Axe blog. The only thing we're asking is that those posts need to be new posts. We're not doing cross-posting. Uh, cross so if you already uh, post that, uh, if you already publish that post on your blog, we're not going to do it on Axe blog. But if you have something new, technical idea, something you want to share about a specific technology, uh, let us know. And you can write a blog post for the Xbox. What is great with that blog is that we have a really huge reach. So you're going to share your passion with a lot of people. You're going to share your knowledge with a lot of people. Again, that's going to be a good benefit for you because you can add this to your resume. You can tell people, hey, I wrote for the Xbox. And when you do blog posts, there's a small uh, section where you have your bio. You can put links to your Twitter account, to your LinkedIn account, to your blog. This is great exposure. So we're always looking for great content. If you have any idea, please let us know. Ping me, send me an email. We also have some uh, newsletter, a technical newsletter. So it's a money newsletter. It's called the Firefox Apps and Acts. So uh, there are some people that don't like blogs. There are some people that don't like to subscribe to RSS feed. Some people prefer newsletter. So this is a newsletter where we point people to some of the blog posts. We point people to some of the part of the documentation of NDN. We showcase some amazing Firefox OS applications. So if you have any idea of topics, we should share in that newsletters. Again, please let me know. I will put you in contact with Habi. She's the one managing that newsletter. Uh, again, we're going to have the link at the end of the presentation. Subscribe also to that newsletter. It's really interesting. We don't spam you. It's once a month, and it's with valuable information. I just want to add one thing about blogging. Before I became a community manager, I was a technical writer, so I am a word geek. So if you would like feedback about your writing, 
I would absolutely be happy to do that. So, you know, just send me an email, say, hey, I, I wrote this blog post, you know, can you give me some feedback about it? I would be happy to do that. So consider that an open offer. I will use that offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the point of the enabling part. A little louder. Louder? Okay. Getting started now. What? <laughs> <laughs> Is that loud enough? Yes. Okay. So the point of the enabling part of evangelism is to help people when they run into problems, to help them get to success. You inspire them, they get all excited, but you know, developing never runs, runs perfectly. They'll run into some kind of roadblock. And so we, instead of you know, running into the roadblock and then getting frustrated and giving up. We want to help them get past that, work through it, and get to success. So what does, what does enabling mean? How do we do this? Uh, so we continue to inspire people, keep telling them about uh, cool stuff, our passion, all of those things, and get them to actually do things, give them tools to be successful, and help them with any issues. And this is where things like documentation on MDM comes in um, to give you know give them the, the details and the how tos. Um, and there's a lot of other activities that we do at Mozilla to help developers be successful. So one of the programs that we have, do you want to talk about the yep. Founds for Apps? So um, how many of you knows about the Founds for Apps program? So uh, it's just something uh, which can help <coughs> us. So basically, this is a program for, uh, the latest version is for developers that have HTML application or game. So if you already have an HTML game or an HTML application, or if you are using Cordova or PhoneGap, so that means that now you can publish to Firefox OS, we can make a deal for you. So if you uh, tell us that you're going to publish your application to Firefox OS Marketplace, we're going to give you a free phone. So my job and the job of Jason Wearsby, another uh, evangelist with me, we're uh, focusing on Firefox OS, and her job is to follow up with those developers that are part of the program. So we are selecting the developers uh, that have quality application. If you are selected, we give you a free phone. I'm going to follow up with you, or Jason's going to follow up with the developers to be sure that they're going to publish the application, and if they have any issue, we're going to help them. So where do I need your help is to promote that program. We need more developers, we want more developers, we want more quality application, and this is a good way to do this. This is a lot of work to do those one-on-one -on -one relationship, but you're going to see some tools where we uh, send people if they have any questions, so that help us to get other people to help us answer those questions. And uh, we're going to have a link uh, for this program. So when you're going to do talks about Firefox OS, when you're going to talk to a developer that have an interesting uh, web application, please tell them about that program. So this is one way you can help us. And apps on a plane. So basically because the, the developer reference phone, the, kind of, the code name is Flame, the latest version of the apps phone, phones for apps, program is called Apps on a Flame, and so this is the, the, the form to apply for that. Another way that we enable developers is that Mozilla has started sponsoring some tags for Firefox and Firefox OS on Stack Overflow, and we monitor questions that come up under those tags. So this is definitely something where community can help out. Just, you know, if you are a Stack Overflow user and you like that, that, uh, that community, um, look and see what kinds of questions people are asking. And if there's something that you can help out with, just jump in there and give, give answers. Uh, if you want to go and speak about Firefox OS, this is a really good way to find out what kinds of problems people are running into as they're trying to develop apps. And then maybe you can develop a talk that addresses that kind of issue so that other people won't have that problem in the future. And then there is MDN, uh, which is our 
huge repository of <coughs> documentation about web technologies and other development stuff. Um, Priyanka has stepped out. I was going to ask her to talk about the events that she has run of uh, <coughs> documentation sprints and localization sprints. That's another way that you can help uh, developers get involved with Mozilla um, and learning about uh, and, and enabling other people to learn. Uh, we have a translation interface within MDN where if you want to translate a, a document, it brings up this, you know, you have the original English on one side and then you create the, the translation on the other side. This is a partially translated page. Um, and that's an, this is actually one of the easiest ways to get involved with Mozilla uh, because there's it, it's a wiki. You can just go in and, and start making edits. Doing translations is a great way if you are learning. So you know enough about web technologies to, to basically understand what's going on that you want to learn more. Translating an article about the topic that you want to learn about is an awesome way to learn about it. And then another way that we can help both help app developers and help our lo the local communities to get localized content is by localizing apps. So we we have this arrangement with TransFX where app developers can put their strings for their apps on TransFX and get help from our community to localize them. And again, make, making you know <coughs> making apps available, for example, in native languages that maybe otherwise would not be available in those languages. And so this is definitely something that we, we'd like your help promoting, letting people know about. And of course, if you are really into it, you can contribute to, to Gaia. It's all open source. Uh, and Robert Nyman has developed this uh, Firefox OS boilerplate app, which basically has code that uses, um, I don't know if it's all of the web APIs, but a, a good number of them. Most of them. So it's most great for the most part. It is also. Yes. And so you can use it for demos, and you can use it for uh, open source code that you know use it, shows you how to use those APIs. And of course, you can always file bugs and fix them. The last thing, another recent, uh, recently started program, is that we have a channel for people to give feedback about Firefox developer tools. So if you, you know, if, if there's some feature that you would like to see in our developer tools, we now have a way for people to give that feedback. And like the most recent um, version of Firefox has tool, I guess it's not the release channel, but the Aurora channel. There are now developer tools that have been developed, you know, in, in response to suggestions that people have made through the feedback channel. So then we have a bunch of resources. We're now on the downward slope of our presentation. Um, so there, we now have a public mailing list for community evangelism. So if you want, you know, to do any of these activities and you want to talk about it, this is the place to go. Um, and it, it's a Mozilla discussion forum, which means we have, it, it exists as a mailing list and a Google group and a news group, but really the mailing list is the easiest way to deal with it, I think, in my opinion. And so please, we encourage you, if you're interested in doing these activities, to subscribe to this mailing list and we'll talk about what's going on. And there, there is also the Mozilla Evangelism Reps Facebook group. So if you like, if you live in Facebook, um, you know, you're welcome to join us. It um, originally started being specifically for the Mozilla Reps program Evangelism SIG, but we're, it's not restricted anymore. It's just anybody who's interested in this topic. It's just that 
once a group has a certain number of members, we can't change the name. So it's the name evangelism that, <coughs> but really it's just Facebook group for people interested in Mozilla evangelism. And we have also originally part of the REPS program, but useful for anybody uh, on the, the wiki, we have a bunch of resources for public speaking and whatever else. So, um, you know, just be aware that, that, that this exists and it's a resource for you. And check it out, see what's there. Um, and we're, we're keeping things updated. Uh, we recently, Christian Hellman went in and updated the app day in a box, which had, you know, when it was originally developed, used certain tools that are now kind of obsolete, and so we updated it to use the most recent tools. Um, Gustav, do you want to talk any about uh, running app days, like the things that you have done? Um, just anything you want to say about that? Uh, yeah, so most of you had heard whatever was said in that, uh, what was that? Yes, yeah, so the community building. Building. Yeah, the yeah. community building session. Now, Sorry. <laughs> Can the camera see me? Okay. So, um, if any of you are interested in doing app days, uh, my first suggestion would be think about what, uh, what is the kind of audience that you are addressing. If it is really technical audience, or is it slightly non technical audience who are getting introduced to Firefox OS? Based on that, you can tailor your content. So, we have a number of formats. So, we have the app day in a box, we have a one day hackathon. And we have a two-day uh, format where the first day is a training session and the second day is a hackathon. Now, what's the difference between the two? App day in a box is like a really concentrated format. You either end up doing a two hours or three hours hackathon where people know exactly what they're doing. They come to just work together and like finish their apps which they were working on already or get some quick help from people. Or an app day in a box can be just, just like introducing Firefox OS to the public where it's more of a one to many session. Um, the one day hackathon is usually split into a two hours of training where you talk about Firefox OS architecture, generally you know more of the diseases of this. Okay, and uh, it's followed by around a six hours hackathon. Now, even if you're doing one day, when I say one day, I don't mean it as 24 hours, I think it has eight to 10 hours. When I say two day, it can be 24 hours, which might say start at um, 9 a.m. in the morning, go through the entire night and end at 9 a.m. in the next morning. So it's like an overnight hackathon with a full day of training as well. So that's a very complicated setup because you need to get a lot of permissions. So I would thoroughly discourage you from doing that even though you're going to get really geek ass developers if you do that. Because those like hardcore developers really like to stay up all night and you know work on code even if the rest of the people are sleeping. That's what usually happens. Now, uh, for the two-day platform, the setup is really interesting, but once again, you need to have enough content to have a one-day full of training session. So content is really important here. So if you need help in kind of in any kind of content related to app days, you can contact me, and Sudish, Leon, Patli, Shayok, and also Jai Pratish, the other guys who have been doing app days in and around India. Um, yeah, and also. One of the things very really important for app this is don't just pitch for creating apps. You can also pitch to developers about contributing to the IR, contributing to Firefox OS itself. So also show them the resources as part of your presentation on how they can build Firefox OS themselves, that is compile Firefox OS on their devices. If you know how they can port to other devices, give resources on that as well, so not just app. <coughs> Even if we call it app day, because we can't really call it Firefox OS day, it will sound like it's a national holiday. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We still call it Firefox OS app day, and just make sure you use that platform for everything related to Firefox OS, including evangelism or like developer relations. Cool, thank you. Um, I wanted to go back a little bit to MVM. Where was MVM? Oh, yeah. So, um, Bianca's back. Uh, and she had talked about MDN in the <coughs> community building session. Um, and you want to talk about the events that you've done? Yeah. So um, MDN events are kind of a very new thing happening in India. 
not uh, many events. I think uh, we have had four events only till now uh, since last year. I mean, we started late last year, around uh, October, November, we started planning for the first MDN event in India. And since then, till today, we didn't have too many of them. But uh, yeah, so it was a, a very new event structure. Uh, uh, we, we actually had to do a lot of uh, uh, first structuring, then restructuring based on the first event feedback, and again restructuring based on the second one. Uh, too many trials and too many experiments uh, done with the event structure, and finally we have now have a kind of event structure there. So uh, when we initially began, we thought of having an MDN event, like uh, having an event solely dedicated for MDN contribution, showing them how to do stuff, uh, how, and uh, sitting there and uh, doing some MDN hacking installing Kuma and everything, which kind of wasn't a very good idea. Because uh, when you uh, declare some event as MDN event, not many people are aware of what MDN is, and not many people will show up to the event. That's the first challenge. Uh, second, if people come, trying to install Kuma sitting in an event is a very, very not so good idea, unless you have really interested developers who like to you know, struggle through all the barriers and then do it. Most of the people, you have a room full of 70 people who are, oh, I'll install Kuma today. And by the time uh, your event is done, maybe two, two and a half hours later, hardly two people will have sufficiently done something or somewhere near installing Kuma, and the rest will have left the room hand. Uh, so, yes, uh, then we uh, started restructuring our event to have more, I mean, uh, put MDA as a part of some other event. Maybe we have a Mozilla event in general where we just introduce MDN as one of the contribution areas. So that worked out better. Uh, now we have an event structure where we uh, again try the same thing. We go and talk mostly about Mozilla. I mean, we begin with Mozilla as a project, and then along with other contribution pathways, we introduce MDN as one of the contribution pathways, and we kind of don't try to uh, get into too technical part like Kuma installation and everything unless uh, requested by the audience. So we mostly uh, teach them things that we, I was talking about yesterday, like what are the different things you can do on MDN, go to the getting started page, uh, play around a bit, you can um, sit and tag a few articles today, those kind of things. So yes, that is what we are trying to do right now. And this year, I mean, whatever is remaining part of the year we have, uh, remaining few months, we are trying to uh, have a few more such events, but we don't won't call it MDN events, but we'll have MDN as part of other Mozilla events. And I recall that uh, Priyanka said that one of the questions that came up during the community building <coughs> session was, well, why do we need even need translation on MDN? And the answer is really, you know, it's up to the community whether any particular language needs to be translated. It may be that you know, most developers speak English, and so they can read the English pages, and you don't need any translation. Or it may be that that's not actually true. You guys are the really elite, and there are plenty of people in India who might be doing development who are not as comfortable with English as you are. Um, especially uh, what we've heard from other language communities is that people like to have things in their own language when they're learning new concepts. So that they don't have to be dealing with the second language and the new concept at the same time. So maybe you don't bother to translate the reference material, which is kind of always reminding you of things you already know, but you want to focus on the, the tutorials and the conceptual articles to put that into, into native languages. And it, there may be cases where you know, there's so many languages in India, maybe you know, if it's the case that if somebody speaks language X, then you don't need a translation in language Y for some value of X and Y. Uh, so that, that really is up to you, whether any particular language um, needs translation. So going back to where we were, Uh, mailing lists, you should sign up. Um, okay, one other event type that hasn't been done yet, but we are thinking about creating is the meetup in a box, where we'll help provide content that you can use for a developer meetup. Maybe you want to have something on an ongoing basis. This will make it a bit easier for you 
by providing a bunch of materials, you still need to learn it and internalize it in order to present it, but you don't have to come up with all of it from scratch. And the current thinking about this is to make it a GitHub repo so that uh, somebody who uses a given set of materials can contribute back improvements to it, or if you come up with your own materials, you can share it with people and so on. Um, and the idea of what's in the meetup in a box is some presentation content, maybe slides, maybe not, an example code project for a given API or developer tool or what have you, a script for demonstrating that, and then some points for discussion because when you have a meetup, you want people to not just sit there and watch your presentation, but actually engage. And maybe some other stuff depending on the exact specific content. Some things will have, it may, will make sense to have a screencast, other things it won't, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, the, as I said, this hasn't been implemented yet, but we want your ideas about what kinds of topics you would like to get help in presenting for uh, this type of event. So we have a short link there to an etherpad where you can go and add your um, suggestions um, and we'll use that to develop an initial list of, you know, stuff to start with to, to launch this, uh, this program. So, looking for your, your feedback about that. Uh, so, <coughs> you don't need to write all of these things down. We will make the slides available, but these are all of these different resources and tools and everything that we have talked about during, uh, during our time today. And that's the the end of the presentation part of the session.